Uh, well, hello everyone. I have with me today a very special guest, uh, Stan Goodenough, who is world famous for being a great advocate uh, for Israel from a Christian perspective. Uh, Stan, welcome to the Australian Jewish Association Facebook page. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, because some people won't, uh, won't know you. Certainly. Uh, what you do. Hmm. So, I'm Gentile. I'm a South African Christian. I've lived in Israel for 30 years. Um, I went there as a journalist initially and uh, wrote about the geopolitical situation in Israel for a Christian audience. Right. Um, aware, very aware that all those, those daily events that mesmerize the world about Israel are being communicated almost 100% um, almost from a negative anti-Israel perspective mm. and certainly not from a point of view that Christians would relate to. Yet Christians were being, um, their thoughts were, were being shaped by a secular, non-Christian and often anti Jewish anti-Christian media. So I went there for that with that understanding and wrote extensively about the uh, peace process as it's called from Madrid where the first uh, form of it was rolled out by G George Herbert Walker Bush and then through the Oslo process, o Oslo 1, Oslo 2 uh, and the consequences of that and what yeah. the peace process which promised peace actually led to which was so much more violence. Covered that and showed um, hopefully the bankruptcy of that whole uh, approach to the issue in the Middle East involving Jew and Arab. I will, I will mm. ask you a couple of things about the peace okay. process in, in a moment, but sure. um, you've also had some involvement with the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. Right. In fact, it was the, we call it the ICEJ, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. I went on staff as a journalist. That was my first posting. So when I began to write about these events, I was doing it for the ICEJ, um, and I was with them for eight years. Uh, I helped set up their daily news service online as the internet was coming into uh, into all of our lives, and um, and focus. That was my call. That was my brief at so, ICEJ. I mean, the name suggests that uh, part of its mission, its ethos, if you like, is to have embassies in Jerusalem. Is that a correct assumption? Oh, more than correct. The, 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 embassy was, the Christian embassy was established as a direct response to the world community's rejection of Jerusalem as capital. When right. 13 embassies left Jerusalem after the Knesset passed the, the Jerusalem law in 1982, uh, the United Nations condemned Israel, said it was illegal under international law to call Jerusalem the capital of Israel, and all the nations got up and, and, and left huffing and puffing, and the Christians who were in the city for the Feast of Tabernacles that year, for Sukkot that year, they said, all right, well, our nations may reject uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, but we certainly don't, so let's have a Christian embassy that shows Christians from nations around the world do stand with Israel, that shows the Jewish people, there are many of us, millions of us who believe this is your city and the embassy should be there. That's a, that's a wonderful initiative, and, and for our audience, i let you know that we, next week, will have our first formal meeting between AJA and the Australian executive of the ICEJ. And obviously one of the things that we'll be talking about is um, what we can do to facilitate the Australian government moving the embassy to Jerusalem. So uh, we'll be in touch and get your ideas about that. Absolutely, system. absolutely. Now, in the Christian world, we see um, some really positive groups for Israel, hmm. enthusiastic, strong, in fact, I would say, uh, better than many of our own Jewish groups right. in support of Israel. But we also see the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen Christian groups burning flags of Israel. I mean, what's going on there that in the one religion we have such extremes? All right, well, I think uh, the we're talking about 2,000 years of history here. Mm. We're talking about history, now I'm speaking it as a Christian and what Christians believe. We're talking about a faith that was established in a Jewish country by Jewish people, including, of course, Jesus, who was a Jew. This is what the faith is about. And Jesus taught love for your enemies, standing up to those who, who are, in any case, love for your enemies, treating everybody with love and respect and kindness, and never suggested, ever suggested that the Jewish people were to become a target of some kind of hostility just because they didn't recognize him as Messiah. Never taught that. But very soon after his life period, uh, Gentiles increasingly became Christians, embraced this religion, and they took it into heresy. Uh, just as the northern kingdom of Israel, right. not able to worship in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. went and worshipped the golden calves, so the early Gentile church 
abandoned the teachings of Jesus himself and began to promote something which we call replacement theology, which says Jews rejected Jesus, and of course they, 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 they uh, daily and, and, and down through the centuries have accused the Jews of killing Christ. That's been one of the big uh, motivations for anti-Semitism. Yesterday, um, uh, day before Australia time, yesterday Israel time, was the 25th anniversary of the Oslo Accords. Um, one of our good friends, um, Martin Sherman, was interviewed um, uh, on ILTV and we've put uh, his interview up on uh, our Facebook page. But what's, what's your view specifically on the outcome of Oslo and the, the two-state model, so to speak? All right, as succinctly as I can cover this period, because it was very, it was, it's been very drawn out since Oslo, the original concept of Oslo was not, not, was not two states. The, uh, Hitzhak Rabin, uh, who signed the, the first Oslo agreement with uh, Arafat under Bill Clinton, mm. never supported the idea of a Palestinian state. The Oslo agreement was to establish a, an autonomous area, or rather autonomy for the Arabs, the Palestinian Arabs, that they would be able to live in Judea and Samaria, what the world calls the West Bank, that they would be able to live there and govern themselves in terms of their municipal, municipal bylaws and taxes and everything else. An autonomous situation, they would have policemen even, but they would not have any kind of state uh, structure whatsoever. He's, uh, the assassination of Rabin was, in, in my assessment, watching and covering this as a journalist, was used as a springboard to push forward the more radical idea of statehood for the Palestinian Arabs. And until today, mm -hmm. uh, those who, who promote the two-state solution, they will make pilgrimage to Hitzchak Rabin's uh, memorial as, uh, on, on Mount Herzl as if they are uh, persevering with his legacy. But in his words, in the words of that man, uh, a Palestinian state would rise on the ruins of Israel. That was what he, he understood was a danger. Everybody talks about it today as if that's, but that's not what Oslo was. What Oslo was, was a, a, an offering to the Palestinian Arabs, and tragically, and I think in an error of gro gross error of judgment to the PLO leadership, which were in exile in Tunisia and were basically a non-entity at that point, offering them a little bit of control over their areas, Gaza and Jericho first, that was the first uh, agreement, uh, in exchange for three promises, an end to terrorism, an end to incitement to violence against right. Israel, and changing the charter. Those were the yeah, three provisions okay. of the PLO. And, uh, and Israel, Arafat came in, took Gaza, came in and, and, and into Jericho, were given that, that little bit of control over land. And in response, they did not stop terrorism, they escalated terrorism. They escalated violence and they didn't change the charter. We started having drive-by shootings. We had intensified acts of terror leading, leading to the suicide bombs. And every time a bomb would go off, Israel would look to the United States, the primary sponsor of the two-state solution, and say, well, this isn't working. We've given, we're giving land and we're getting more bombs. And the United States, this was their line, don't give in to the enemies of peace. Keep going forward. Give away more. And so they gave away more. And Arafat brilliantly came up with a division of labor. He was the front of the negotiator. He would talk to Israel, press Israel, try to get more out of Israel. And when Israel wouldn't give any more concessions, this is documented, by the way, this isn't propagandistic. When... He, when, he, when, when, when when Arafat couldn't get anything more out of Israel, he, he nodded and winked at the Fatah Hawks or the, the uh, uh, Qasem brigades of the, of the Hamas, and he said, now go blow up some more Jews. I, I think um, uh, maybe he was that smart, maybe um, the KGB behind the scenes in that, in that era were actually uh, advising him, I, I don't know. Mm. Um, look, Stan, we, I, I want to keep this short. I want yes. to thank you very much. We have a gift for you. Um, if, you can bring it here, please. Thank you. Now, this is um, uh, written by one of our local rabbis. Mm. Uh, it's a book called Spirals of the Soul. It um, is written by a rabbi who attended the Nations Bless Israel event, which was the sort of Christian celebration here mm. uh, of Israel. And it's all about the Jewish holidays. Um, so uh, I think it will be meaningful Thank for you, you. Thank and you I'd like much. you to Thank have you. that as a gift. Thank you. And I'll tell everyone else that um, uh, Stan has a very good website called uh, Jerusalem Watchman. Uh, we'll put a link in the first comment under this video, so if people want to find out more about you, how to connect with your writings, etc., um, we'll do it through that website. Thank you. Thank much. you so much. Thank you.